In this video, I'm going to do a critical analysis of William Ruto's visit to Msambweni yesterday. That visit is significant politically speaking. The speeches, the messaging, the people who attended that meeting, and even the timing itself is significant. But before we do all those, I want to take this opportunity to wish you a happy and prosperous new year. It's the first day of the year. I know and understand so well that 2020 was very rough for most of us. Many people lost their job, jobs in 2020. Many people lost their businesses in 2020. Many people lost their loved ones in 2020. We had the COVID and I'm happy that at least several subscribers on this channel, especially those who are outside the country, are sending me their, their pictures taking the vaccine. But we managed to overcome 2020. And in this channel, at least we've witnessed a lot of growth this year. So next year's, let us face it head on. Now let us get to business because business is part of our business on this channel. William Samoy Ruto yesterday attended or visited Msambweni. He went there for Thanksgiving following his victory against Raila Molodinga and against President Uru Muge Kenyatta during the by-election. But that visit is significant. I want to look at it critically. The first thing which I observed with that meeting was the timing. 31st of December 2020. Why was the date 31st chosen? Basically, Tim Tanga Tanga wanted to send a message to President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta that 2020, they are ready for him. So that's the first message which I'm getting, the timing. And again, if you look at timing, we know so well that traditionally, President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta normally issue address to the nation. So the, this meeting coming just a few hours before the president address, in my view, was also intended to divert attention of Kenyans from the president's speech to this particular meeting. So the timing of 31st, marking the end of the year, and tomorrow being first the beginning of the year, is significant. So that's the first thing. The second thing which I observed in this meeting is that it was used to launch direct attacks on President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. And of course, it's not the first time Tanga Tanga brigades are launching an attack on the president and his family. But this one here was significant because coastal region traditionally have never supported the Kenyatta family. So the choice of Msambweni and the choice of attack right in Msambweni was intended to send a message to the president and his family that 2020 is going to be rough for him. In fact, let me tell you one thing which is going to happen in 20. 21. We are going to witness a more bold William Ruto and his allies. They are going to go to the president and the family without any fear. I want you to listen to a speech by Mike Sonko and then another one by the deputy president himself. Because normally what the deputy president does, he goes to a place his team attacks the president, then when he gets the opportunity to talk, he kind of try to dismiss those talks. So listen in to Mike Mbubi Sonko, keenly what he's trying to say. <laughs> Uh, 
ujue huyo rais family yake ni wezi mimi sitaogopa kusema kuna scandal ya yamini sofia dhili ya kwanza kaunti zote hata hii pale seneta wenu walikuwa wamelala yule alinipigia yes mimi kwa nyumbani boy tulikuwa tunakatwa pesa kila allocation inakuja kwa serikali ya mtuzi inaenda national government kinyume ya sheria article 219 inasema pesa zote lazima zipeane kwa account walichukua 63 billion makazi na madada za mheshimiwa huru mwigai dinata na bibi pia amenyamaza twali bila sisi amenyamaza juzi kama bilionaires nyokapi kinyata dada yake huru amepora pesa za covid bilionaires mwanaume ameshikwa mwanaume amerekodi sana kwa mali hiyo ndio kazi kwa nini rais anataka jeshi iendelee kuchunga uporaji na watu wanaogopa kuongea mimi nitasema mimi uhuru amenidhulumu amenyang'anya uongozi akitaka roho yangu pia achukue lakini ukweli nitaongea mimi nawaomba kwa heshima najua viongozi wengi hapa wako na machungu kwa sababu wamenyang'anywa vyeo wamenyang'anywa viti vyao wamedhulumiwa kwa njia mbalimbali wamepelekwa kotini wamedhulumiwa kwa njia mbalimbali lakini nawaomba ndugu zangu tuwa, tuwe wavumilivu tuvumilie na tumwachie Mungu mambo yote nataka tusikose heshima kwa rais kwa family kwa wale watu wengine wote mimi nataka niwaombe kwa heshima tusiwakosee heshima kwa sababu yale ambayo yamefanyika Kenya hii Mungu wa mbinguni anajua number three, that meeting was also used to officially launch the UDA party the United Democratic Alliance party Ndindi Nyoro was in that meeting with the UDA cap basically was sending a message to the president remember you are not supposed constitutionally to promote another political party while belonging to another political party. Ndindi Nyoro is a member of Jubilee Party. But he was here promoting that new political party. The speakers at that meeting spoke passionately about that party. But what caught my attention the most was the speech by Johnson Mudama. Johnson Mudama is the party leader or the proposed chairperson of the United Democratic Alliance Party and he spoke in his capacity as the chairperson of that party. And normally because in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence, if you followed the list of speakers, Johnson Mudama actually spoke then I think one or two people then the deputy president. So which means within Tanga Tanga hierarchy Johnson Mudama ranks high there. But in his speech, he advocated for this particular party. And in fact, he even uh, welcomed Sonko to this party and even welcomed uh, Isaac Maura. Listen in to Johnson Mudama. kama mwenyekiti wa Asla Kenya mzima nachukua nafasi hii kumkaribisha na kumpokea mheshimiwa Maura katika siasa za Asla Nation Maura hey Maura hey na mimi nitawaambia baadaye iko pia na kufanisha maana yake sio sasa lakini ni UDP UDP nikisema UDA mnasema kazi ni UDP nataka kusikia uko na mikono juu UDA UDA karibu sana mheshimiwa mmoja haya 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 tena 
Hawa mwenye kiti wa Asla Kenya Na swama hapa Kusema kwa mwishmi wa sungo Karibu hapa kwa Asla Hapa ndiye unapata mwanaidi wa kawaida Na tena sungo tuseme Ulichakuliwa na watu wa, na watu wa Nairobi Ukiwa mginga, ukiwa mkora, ukiwa kumbafu, ukiwa mwenda wazimu, watu wanailumu wa mkuchaku. Mana ni mwanaidwa yake mwenyewe. Jambo siwezi kutoka hama bila kusema. Mimi, hivi sasa, ni mwenye kiti wa chama inaitwa United Democratic Alliance. Na mimi ni kiyoma mwishimi wa Ruto Tukisimamisha watu na Nairobi ya tusaidie Bile tulimuomba tusaidie Kwa peso ni kawaida na wakati huru anaomba sasa Na ODM awasaidie Kwa hivyo chakuonia mwishimi wa naibu wa rais Lakini mwambie bani na mwishimi Bani wala ulisema heti Kama Ruto ni mwanaume Asimamisha ilabana na Nairobi na mi na kurudishia hayo hayo tu na kuambia ODM sio mwanaume kama ina wanaume wateni kufuata candidate wa jubilee wekeni wenu kumulishi ya utemakuli bas jambo na mwisho jambo na mwisho tunatemea Kenya kiti ya Nairobi so mko duku yangu ya nefi yangu Si mama sasa ni mara Mana kuokoka kwako Na kuenda mbele na siyasa Kuko chini na mwishmiwa Wede Samway Guto The fourth thing which came out clearly out of that meeting Is that William Samway Ruto Is keen on reorganizing The coastal politics And that's why Raila Odinga should be worried Msambweni Was a stronghold Of Raila Amon Odinga in the last election, Kuali County, the governor went to Jubilee Party, overwhelmingly. But the presidential vote still went to Raila Mondudinga. In Kuali, ODM won two seats. There was the, the Musambweni and there was uh, Matugu constituency. Only two. They lost other seats either to Jubilee or other NASA affiliated parties. The speeches which were coming out of uh, this meeting was very clear that the deputy president is keen on reorganizing coastal politics. And Salim Mvuria is strategically being made the, being made William Ruto's point person at the coastal region. If you observe the Msambweni by election, William Ruto was never, if you followed Msambweni by election, William Ruto never attended any meeting in the constituency. Hassan Omar, Jijo Pevu, Aisha Jumwa, during that time elevated Salim Vuria. And after the win, Salim Vuria is now being made William Ruto's point person at the coast. And I want you to listen to Hassan Omar speech briefly and Eden Dwale. Tulisema hapa msamweni mutabadilisha siyasa ya Kenya. Raila Kaja kasema hini wa BBI muka mwangusha. Joa kasema ati ya muita ruto tukamleta muamedali haka mwangusha. Kila mtu wakaja kajipigia kifua. Wote wakateza ngoma. Sote tukatukua wimbi la watu wa msambweni Na hatuto isa hau ile, ile hishma muliotupa We shall reciprocate to the people of msambweni Na sisi hatu kukuja Mwishimu wa namneo kukuja Mwishimu wa makamu wa rais kukuja Mimi su kukuja Kwa sababu tuliamini sana uongozi wa gavana mvuria Gavana mvuria ni mtu wa pole pole, ni mtu wa kusikiza, ni mtu wa maendeleo. Na sisemi kwa vile ndirafiki yangu, 
Nafikiri ni gavana wa kwanza katika Kenya tangu ugatuzi ambaye amepeleka watoto wengi masomo nje ya nchi. Mimi najua huyu. Watoto wengi maskini wanasoma India na nje ya nchi kwa sababu ya huyu Mvuria. So Mvuria sisi tunamjua. Na unajua msiongee sana mambo ya ODM. Mwanzilishi wa ODM wako hapa. Huyu William Ruto, mimi na wengine. Huyu Hassan Sarai na kina huyu Mudama wametutusi miaka mingi sana. Na unajua mapenzi ya Mwenyezi Mungu ni ajabu sana. Leo tuko na Mudama. Huyu Mudama ametusi sana sisi watu wa Jubilee. Lakini sasa na huyu Aisha. Huyu Aisha, huyu Mudama, huyu Hassan Omar, huyu Khalwale wametu wametuita majina mingi sisi wafuasi wa makamu wa rais na wa rais lakini sasa nimeona tena kuna wamekuja na sisi and lastly i think william ruto and his brigades used the msambweni visit to officially launch their campaigns and apart from launching their campaigns they also unveiled their campaign strategy and the team the entire tanga tanga brigades were in msambweni that's the honest truth and from msambweni you could tell that Josphat Nanok is going to be the points person in the Rift Valley region Josphat Nanok was a close ally of Raila Amolodinga in fact Josphat Josphat Nanok election as a member of parliament can be attributed to Raila Amolodinga his election as a governor could be or could also can be attributed to Raila Amolodinga. He was present there. Then there was Boni Halwale. Boni Halwale is going to be the Tanga Tanga point person in Western Kenya. He used to be a NASA supporter. Again, you could see Salim Vuria being propped up as the point person from the coastal region. Again, that was very clear. Then there was Johnson Mudama being the face of the Ukambani. So basically, these guys launched the, their 2020 presidential bid and a team in Samboini. Let us wait and see how everything is going to unfold moving forward. But for now, those are the few things which I observed during that rally. And in my next video, I want to advice president Uru Kenyatta offer my unsolicited advice to the president on what he needs to do to tame Tim Tanga in 2021 because if he won't do that his legacy will be zero and these guys are going to overrun him in 2021 William Ruto has a young dynamic team this team has energy people like Hassan Omar people like Ndindi Nyoro people like um, Jichopevu, Aisha Jumwa, they are motivated. They are ready and out there to prove a point. William Ruto has the watches. So he will be able to finance all these things. And William Samai Ruto has managed to craft a message, the Hustler Nation message, which is resonating so well with the masses. So in my next video, I'm going to advise President Dulu Kenyatta what he needs to do in 2021 to tame his deputy and his brigades. And I'll not ask for anything from him. <laughs> I'll not ask for any money from the president and his handlers. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Enjoy your new year.